The most difficult thing that I've ever done in business is hire people. You know, at first when we were hiring, there was no system or process. It was just, hey, meet this guy, have a quick conversation. If he seems okay, hire him. A lot of people don't realize that you need a system and a process for every section, every area within your business. How do you build a network, run a profitable business, and make an impact? Oh, and have a personal life at the same time? That's the question, and this podcast is the answer. I'm your host, Chaz Wilson, husband, father of five, author of the book, Five Plus One, president and co-founder of Master Networks, Inc., a national networking organization. Look, each week I bring you successful entrepreneurs who will share success strategies of how to effectively build a network, add valuable wisdom to your journey, and help you succeed. Welcome to Connect, Share, and Prosper. Hey everybody, welcome to Connect, Share, Prosper, episode 75. I'm so excited to be here with my guest today. He is a husband, father of three, including twins like I have. So we're going to talk about twins, the power of twins and the, the amazingness of twins. He's from New York, lives in Long Island. He is the CEO of Top Class Installations, a GPS tracking device and dash cam installation company. In his spare time, he enjoys bow hunting, playing technology, playing with technology, like myself, sharing new experiences with his children, and stretching his comfort zone. He is the author of Unf Your Business, Stop Business Self-Sabotage by Getting Clear on Your Core Values Now. He's a member of Ryan Stuman's Apex Elite, attended Infusionsoft's Elite Forum Training. He's been featured in multiple publications like Mobile Electronics Magazine, CEO Outlook, CEO Blog Nation, Fit Small Business, and the Startup Growth, and many, many others. Please welcome Tomas Keenan to Connect Share Prosper. Welcome, my friend. Hey, hey, what's going on? I am uh, I'm grateful to be here, sir. I appreciate you taking some time out of your day and getting me on in front of your audience. Yeah, I appreciate you. So listen, I, you know, here's the cool part about, well, first of all, I want to know about your twins. So you, you mentioned to me you have a five-year-old daughter mm -hmm. and then you have three-year-old twins or soon to be three-year-old boy and yeah. girl, right? Yeah. And what was it like when you found out you, had, you were having twins? Um, it was shocking. And at the same point in time, I knew somehow weirdly, I just knew. Yeah. Yeah. And so what's for those that don't have twins, what's the uniqueness of having twins versus just having a single, <laughs> uh, you think it's double the work, but it's definitely not. It's more like 10 times. Yeah. Yeah. Um, my wife is the best because she goes out there and just, she handles it. She takes care of them in a great way. Uh, their personalities are so different. It's not even funny. Yeah. Yeah. So I have twins. They're my last. So we had boy, girl, boy, and then we had twin boys who will soon to be 10 years old. And they just, have, I coached our football, fourth grade tackle football, and we just had a killer weekend. We came back 22, for all my football fans, we were down 22 to eight at halftime and we won 28-22. So they're super excited. And wow, that's big. Nine. Yeah, yeah. So those are those experiences you talked, I talked about in your intro, right? Those experiences mm -hmm. you have with your kids. And so... I think one of the things I want to start with is how do you do your family life and business at the same time? Well, uh, it's a great question. Um, the way that uh, top class installations is set up is we're a mobile based business. So as you can see here, I'm in my home office. Uh, this is where I work. Uh, we don't have a, a brick and mortar facility. Uh, it's something that's kind of on the horizon just for some other opportunities that have presented themselves over the past few months. But for the past 10 years, so this, this month top class turned 10, uh, for the past 10 years congrats thank you we have not had a brick and mortar we have not we're not the traditional business model you know we have 20 people currently on the team and everyone is remotely based so we have office staff and we have installation technicians who actually travel to each of our customers job sites locations homes offices and they perform the work on the road at those locations so there's no real need for them to come into a facility every day mm. So 10 years in business, congrats. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, we know the failure rate of business to be able to get to 10 years, but was it success right from the gate or what were some of those obstacles you might've had right in the beginning? No, it was not successful from the gate. Um, I'll tell you what, this, this business was the second round for myself and my partner, the co-owner of Top Class, Jimmy Gavales. Uh, It was our second go around. He had his own business years before and I had mine, you know, five or six years before that prior as well. And we came together. And we said, all right, let's give this a whirl. And we, were, we just weren't focused. We were, we were the typical traditional technicians who just accepted every single job that was presented to us. Mm. And we were spread thin. Simple as that. Uh, when it was just the two of us, did we make a good living? Yeah, we did. But in return, you know, it was 20 hour days. 
It was on the road nonstop. It was working six, seven days a week. So there was no life outside of work. Mm. You know, okay. when, I, when I got to about the fifth year, is right when my, my daughter was born, um, I said to myself, you know, this is crazy. I barely see my wife. I'm barely ever home. And I don't want to be that parent. I don't want to raise my child and not be there or not raise my child, actually. Yeah, yeah. So it really uh, it lit a fire under the rear. And I said, all right, there's got to be a better way. I'm smart enough to know that I don't know it all. And I went on a, a real deep journey looking for some answers. Mm -hmm. And I had no idea what would happen. So so you, you're in this phase where I think and most business owners get there, right? You either have mm -hmm. one of two problems. I think most are in the first set, which is I don't have enough business to then go hire the people or I have so much business I need to hire. That becomes the problem. Mm -hmm. Yet in both cases, it's leveraged through other people. Uh, in one case, you've got to go get the business first. So it sounds like you were in a place where well, you had some business and you needed to go hire or you needed more business to be able to go hire. We had we had more business than we could handle. OK, so then, you know, you got to go hire people. What was that like? Were you scared to make those hires? Were, like, we have a lot of people listening right now who are yeah. in this spot. And I I know because I'm coaching them or I'm talking to them or I meet them mm -hmm. in chapter meetings and master networks. And it's like they know this is the step. They know mm -hmm. it right deep in their heart. You probably knew it, too. But there's this fear to hire to make that sure. step. How did you guys do it? So make a quick statement here. First off, the most difficult thing that I've ever done in business is hire people. Yeah. By yeah. far. Yeah. Why? They're, it's just very challenging. There's so many moving parts to it. Okay. You know, um, a lot of people don't realize that you need a system and a process for every section, every area within your business. Mm. Uh, I talk about that heavily within my book. And, you know, at first when we were hiring, there was no system or process. It was just, hey, meet this guy, have a quick conversation. If he seems okay, hire him and just, yeah. you know, throw him working. No training, no nothing. Just throw yeah. him into the fire. Yeah. And one out of every 10 people would make it well, if we were of lucky. Course. Of course, right? Mm -hmm. So we talk about in, in Master Networks, we talk about educate, equip, empower. It sounds like you went right to empower. You went, here you go. It's your job. Go get it. Yes. Yeah. Which is what most entrepreneurs do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You, you're, you're too busy in order to put the the pieces of the puzzle together in the correct order and then train the person say, hey, this is how you complete this task. This is step one. I need you to get to step 10. Figure out the rest in between. Yeah. So did did that first hire? I mean, I know it was for me. And in some mm -hmm. cases, I think the very first hire I had, she was great. I wasn't. I wasn't ready. I ended up letting her go at some point. I actually let my administrative assistant go on administrative assistance day. I didn't know there was such a holiday, and now I do. Uh, so nobody can mess it up more than me at that point, right? But then the second hire, I realized I didn't have all the processes and systems, and so I asked them to help me create it along the way. Mm -hmm. Did you then go create the systems first after you had some of those first hires or did they help you create it along the way? Uh, they, they helped create. And I didn't know enough at the time that we needed to put the systems and processes in place or create them for those people. Mm -hmm. So luckily, one of our first hires uh, was our current inst uh, office manager, we'll call her, or installation coordinator, manager team. She doesn't have an official title. She's just one of the backbones of the company. Yeah. Uh, she is a generalist, which we actually sway away from at this point. We, we like to hire more specialists at this point, but she's a very talented, intelligent person who is able to literally handle whatever we throw at her. Mm. So we hit a home run yeah. and she came in and the initial role that we had for Juliana was an installation coordinator. So the way that our industry works is we're given work. We're li literally handed a sale by a big GPS vendor, like a Verizon or Teletrack Navman, I should a couple of names in the industry. They hand us the work and say, hey, we just sold this job. I need your team to go and put this equipment in at this location. Connect the contact the customer, schedule the work and get your team on site to complete it. Okay. So we were so busy at this point in time, my partner and myself were still in the field doing all the work that we don't have time to book the work that's being handed to us. So, all right, bring this person in. She sits down for about a week with my partner, goes over how he's currently doing things and, and the methods that work for him. And she goes on her own and starts, you know, following his very raw and rough systems and processes, if you want to call them. Yes. And about a week later, she calls us both up and says, guys, <laughs> this is crazy. She yeah. goes, uh, do you mind if I, you know, maybe do this this way? Because this is what I'm running into. 
And we were so busy, we were just grateful for the fact that someone even came to us and said, hey, I want to make this better. Here you go. Go make it better. Yes. And what happened over the next couple of years is she developed the that whole role within the, the organization and really fine tuned it, documented it for us, which was fantastic. Um, and then as we hired on two and three more additional coordinators, she is now training them when they come into the team. So great. So. I mean, I think in business, it becomes this race to this leverage, right? As fast as you can get to leverage is the key. Most people think, well, I can't afford it. And so they don't take that step and then they are still stuck, right? And as you say, un-F your business, stop business self-sabotage by getting clear on your core values now. Why, why core values? Why does getting clear on your core values stop you from the self-sabotage? Because they un- enable you to make every choice and business decision if you're clear on them. So give me an example. So uh, let's say a partner comes to you and says, hey, I have an opportunity I want to throw at you. And, you know, uh, I want you to hook up with this person over here and they do X, Y, and Z in business and you guys can be a great fit for each other. Well, we'll actually put them through an onboarding process. We'll ask them some, some questions and we'll get a good feel for what their core values are. If they aren't, let's say about a 75 to an 80% match to our core values internally to the company, we say, no, thank you. Because we know within the first week, month, year of doing business and interacting with that person, that we're just not going to be the right fit and we're going to bump heads eventually. And I'm a big firm believer that not all business is good business. Yes. And so you just know that if it's not, if the core values don't align, it's just a matter of time before things fall apart, right? Yeah, totally. I mean, we've experienced that. We've seen that many, many times ourselves. And um, so that's, that's an important thing. So like, how does somebody create their core values for their company? I mean, I, you know, I think sometimes they're inherent, but how do you get them out? How do you clearly articulate those and, and have clarity to those? Sure. Well, first thing first, you, you have to understand that it's not a, a quick process. So, so don't expect to sit down and have it cranked out in an afternoon or a weekend. Mm-hmm. Um, in, in our situation, you know, my partner, Jimmy and I were a little unique. And if you do have a business partner, it does add some complexity to it because you have different individual personalities and you have to come together and mesh as a company. So uh, it wound up taking us close to six months to get clear and fine tuned on the core values. Now we were working with a business coach up here on Long Island, uh, a gentleman by the name of Dean Mercado, uh, online marketing muscles, his company, great guy, super, super smart dude. And we literally went into his office every Friday for six months and sat down with him and worked on this. And we chipped wow. away and we asked questions and we dug deeper and why and why and why. And, you know, we started throwing some values at him and he kept kicking back to us, be like, all right, you know, well, you guys really aren't living that. that that's, that's a nice to have value, but you're really not living that. I've known you guys now for a year, two years at this point, And very open, transparent, honest guy, kind of in your face, but in a good way. And, you know, with his help and guidance, we were able to get clear on this. But again, it took six months. But once that clarity came in, we now use these values to check everything in the company. You know, we check people's core values. It's part of the hiring process. If your core values do not match ours, you do not even come into the inner circle of the company. Yeah. And think about all the headache you save yourself long term by just cutting that off right from the beginning. And it gives you this framework to match within. And, and think about these th- those listening today who also, you know, there's some people listening here who are their spouses, their business partner, truly in the business. Right. And they think, well, we don't need to have the core values for the business because they're already. A, no, you have to have them for business because mm-hmm. you're bringing other people in. They need to know what your core values are. Yeah, totally agree. We actually assess each of our employees every quarter. We developed a a nice custom uh, Excel spreadsheet and we enter all the data in there and we can see which values are doing well, where we have dips uh, and we can kind of get a really good feel uh, with executable data of what the the current status is of the the overall company's culture and the health of the culture within the company. I love that. So how do you do that? Do you do you have like a rating system in the spreadsheet? Okay. Yeah, basically it's a one or a zero. So we go over the list of core values. We have seven values in our, in our company okay. and we say, all right, uh, is, is this person being reliable? Reliable is one of the core values. And basically if you are being 50% or greater reliable, or you've proven that to us over the past 90 days, you get a one. Mm. If you haven't, you get a zero. So, you know, the, 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 you can only score a maximum number of points. 
And then Excel does some calculations, puts it on a graph for us and shows us who's who and what's what. And we can then go back to that uh, employee and say, all right, look, listen, you increased your score from last quarter. Great job. Keep, keep kicking butt. Or, hey, you know, you had a major dip in your, your culture score for the last quarter. Is there something going on at home? Is there something going on in your personal life that's affecting yeah. you here? Are you not happy with us? You know, let's communicate, which is another core value, and let's work through this. Like I, at this point in time, if you're on my team, we've invested a lot of time, money, and energy to bring you in here. So let's work through some of these small bumps before they become mountains. So love that, by the way, because it's a great um, benchmark for me to see if I'm progressing, I'm declining, where am I at? It's great for you, but it's like an accountability piece back, right? Mm -hmm. So reliable, communicate. What are some of your other core values? Professional. Okay. Caring. Coachable. Love it. Love it. Resourceful. Love that. Did I get them all? Reliable. Got seven. Reliable, all... communicate, professional, caring, coachable, resourceful. I have six. What am I missing? Accountable. Accountable. Love it. Yep. So I love the, uh, the t well, there's three that really jump out to me, and that is coachable, resourceful, and accountable. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's interesting. Many people in business, you probably experience this too, will say they're coachable, but their results show otherwise, right? It's like, yes, I'm coachable. Of course, everyone says, oh, I'm, no one really walks in and ever says, I'm not coachable. Right. But their results show otherwise. And, and so I love that as a core value of really being coach coachable. But the second one, that I, maybe even as first, is I love resourceful. Mm -hmm. I love people who are resourceful and go figure out the answer before coming and asking you, right? So how do you guys teach the core values on a regular basis within the company? Well, it all starts with the initial onboarding process of the employee. So if we offer employment to someone, we actually bring them in. We do have uh, an office. We use a Regis office where we can go in and use a conference room and whatnot. Sure. So we'll have either a 24 or 48 hour period where we bring that person in, myself, my partner, some of the upper people within management, and we run through the whole operation of the business, how we do things, why we do things, what systems you need to know for your role, what software you need. Let's help you get your your your, um, your email and stuff set up. And then we take a real deep dive into core values and why they're in place. And right. you know where we were before and now we're here because we've leveraged these and have implemented these core values into the business. So that's the first step, which is super important in my opinion. So let me just, let me sure. just ask you a quick question really quick before that. So guys, we're listening to Tomas Keenan episode 75 of connect share prosper he's talking about core values with with the team but let me let me jump back because maybe it's not always employees right what about those because we have people on here right now that i can see who are watching who are solopreneur right now mm -hmm. why why have core values if i'm a solopreneur versus employees and we'll go back to the steps you do with the employees sure so we we leverage core values with uh, with the pareto principle so basically we have a quarterly meeting. We bring the whole team in. We shut the business down for a full day, every every 90 days. The entire team comes in. We go through everything, deep dive again. And we go over core values again. Yeah. We also, we run an exercise called start, stop, keep. So, you know, what do we need to start doing to reach our goals within the next 90 days? What do we need to stop doing? What do we need to keep doing? So on and so forth. So one of the things we do and stop that's come up several times is who do we need to stop doing business with? Love that. And um, the first time we ran the exercise, <laughs> we asked the question and within a, a nanosecond, we had, you know, 10 hands raised in the room. It's like, all right, well, who wants to go first? And everyone said the same name, the same company. It's yeah. like, whoa, hold on a second here. <laughs> you know, guys, great. Thanks for being open, honest, transparent here. Thanks for the communication. Uh, what's going on? What are the issues here? And it, it was just across the board that the entire team was seeing the same or very similar issues with this vendor, this particular vendor. So we made the decision to cut that vendor. Wow. And what happened was um, just the morale, the over, overall morale of the company raised and we were we were better off now. We were, we were able to, to take the time that we were we were giving this, I'll call them a leech of, of the company. We were able to take that time and refocus it to our customers who are more important to us, who valued us, valued our time. And we were able to support them better and build a better relationship with them. 
So what's really great about this, and, and I'm going to dissect what you said a little bit. If, if I have, if I'm clear as a solopreneur on my core values, mm -hmm. I could take that set of core values and every 90 days, whether it be um, myself just internally or even with a business coach, right? I could sit down with my coach and I could say, okay, every 90 days we sit down and go, what do I, what do I need to start doing to hit that, those goals? What do I need to stop doing? What do I need to keep doing? Mm-hmm to hit those goals. So, but if I have that framework of core values, it allows me to really put everything in that box. So super powerful. Now I had, I interrupted you on step one where you bring people in and, and yep. you, you go through that. What do you do with step two? So step two is every 90 days, you know, they're, they're coming in and we, we have uh, the core values are reinfused at the beginning of every quarterly meeting. So I don't care if you've been to every one of them we've ever had, you've been on the team for 10 years. I hate to break it to you, but we're going over our vision. And the vision, in my opinion, the vision is three things. The vision is your mission. It is your purpose, why you're in business, and it's your core value. So we go over those three things in depth at the beginning of every quarterly meeting. Love it. So on top of that, we, we leverage, when we coach our employees, we try to infuse more of the core values. So like, hey, you know, you messed up here and Th these are the core values you affected or you didn't leverage. And that's why you messed up mm. uh, and, and saying vice versa. If someone does something really well, Hey, we, we use Slack. We leverage Slack really heavily in the team since we're all Slack remote. Slack is a technology piece, right? Yeah. That allows you to communicate. Yeah. Yeah. So it's basically a text messaging slash Facebook app internal to the business. Yeah. And we have a channel in there called ring the bell. Mm. So anytime we get good feedback from somebody, whether it's, it's peer to peer, whether it's uh, someone coming from outside of our organization, such as a customer or a vendor who has great feedback for a team member on, on my team, we go into ring the bell and we share it with the entire team instantly. And we say, hey, ring the bell, you know, uh, Rob Felix uh, really wowed this customer last week at this job site. Here's the email that I received. And this shows that Rob really leveraged these three core values and that's why he was able to succeed and wow this customer. I love the ring the bell. I love that. Um, it's such a great thing to celebrate the the successes as part of the core values, to celebrate those successes. Mm -hmm. And I love the ring the bell. I'm going to ask you a question that we got from Facebook. Sure. Um, are your leaders grown from within or do you hire outside to bring leaders in? We've been growing them from within. Okay. And there's definitely a benefit to that? Yeah, there is. Uh, I'm not... I'm open to bringing in leaders from, from outside. I think it always gives you a nice perspective and new set of eyeballs on things. Uh, but at this point in time, we've leveraged them and grown them internally and just brought them up through the ranks in the company. That's so good. So what's on the horizon for your business right now? So if I asked you right now, what is something you need to start doing, stop doing and keep doing that you guys are focused on to help you mm -hmm. grow your business? I think it's a great exercise that sure. uh, those listening could implement, right? They could do it today to help grow their business. Yeah. Um, what are some of the things you guys are doing? So we're starting to, uh, to expand into different areas. Uh, we have a, a pretty large opportunity to get involved in installing breathalyzer systems. Um, so basically if, if, you know, and this goes, the laws vary from each state. Uh, we cover the Northeast. So we're in New York, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, Connecticut, for the most part. Um, each of those states has different laws around it. But if you unfortunately get a DWI, uh, you have to, a lot of times, if you want to drive or get your license right. back, right. have to have this breathalyzer installed in your vehicle. Has, you have to have it installed by a professional. We, we can handle that service. And um, it needs to be calibrated once every 30 to 60 days. So that, that technical ability is right within a wheelhouse of what my technicians currently do at this point in time. So we're looking to bring that on as an additional revenue stream to the company. Um, and um, just me being fully transparent here because it's where yeah, I do I things. It. Yeah. I look at it as a recession proof industry. Yes. No, for no. sure. And yeah. in fact, maybe even higher when the economy gets depressed. Right? Yes. And you know, listen, if you, if you follow the market at all, I mean, at some point in time in the near future, for sure. Uh, I'm not trying to be a Debbie Downer here, but we're going to have a major turn because it's just, it's, it's cyclical. So yeah, we've been talking about this on this episode for, months now that building a network, which is what we do, uh -huh. will insulate you to some respect during that time. Uh -huh. And what you're also doing is you're going, okay, how do we expand our network of products and services uh -huh. that can insulate us during those downturns? And that's what you're looking to do. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's one thing that's uh, on the horizon right now. Uh, we're always looking to expand our footprint and go into different states and different coverage areas. 
Uh, we have very, very good solid relationships with many of the GPS and dash camera companies that we subcontract for. And That's they're great. constantly asking us to go into other areas. And one of the reasons that we haven't expanded so rapidly is we want to control that QC. We want that quality control high. Yes. And in order for us to do that, the way that we like to do things, we need to hire someone. We're not, we typically, for the most part, do not leverage subcontractors like several others do within the industry. Mm. So yeah, it costs me more money. It takes me longer to find the right team member and bring them on and train them and get them through the core values and all that kind of stuff. But when we're done with that employee, we're confident they're ready to go out on their own and handle whatever they need to handle. I love it. So here's what I, I, I heard something you said, but you didn't say it this way that I want people to take from this is in selling, you have to go initiate, right? And you're looking at an industry and a vertical within the industry to go initiate business from. Mm -hmm. And I think too often we sit and we wait in business. People wait for business to come to them and you're out initiating an opportunity. And so you're listening to this right now. I want you to hear what Tomas said. He, he initiated the opportunity to go pull from another vertical to produce additional streams of revenue. If you're listening to this, I want you to think about what are some other ways you could initiate business, whether it be in the current vertical you're in, you're just not initiating enough, or to go to other verticals within the category you, you are dominating to go mm -hmm. get more additional streams, yes? Yeah, totally. Um, one of the things I can say on that, and one of the main reasons that we were introduced to this new uh, potential vertical is just by attending an industry trade show. Mm. We went to a yes. trade show. There was three people who were selling this technology. We had some very in-depth conversations with them. And I look at my partner and we said, why can't we do this? And that was it. And now we've already started taking this, the, the steps needed in order to add this to, uh, to our offerings. And that, this is such a great segue to what uh, to what I was going to end the episode with, but I want to just bring it here is it's the law of proximity. It's getting out and being around people who are doing things and doing business. Uh -huh. For those of you listening who have been watching and connected, we have the mastermind at the end of this month. You have to attend events like this. I just signed up for another event myself. I'm going to go to another state and be with around other like-minded individuals. Uh -huh. So it sounds like you were at this trade show. You must do this on a regular basis. Get out and be with other people, whether it be coaching. I know you said you're part of Ryan Stuman's event. Yep. You're part of Infusionsoft's event. Mm -hmm. Like, How often are you strategic and intentional about being around other people and being in these networks? Uh, I, I'm a little bit <laughs> of the oddball in that arena. Um, I, I'm in Dallas monthly to work with Ryan in his office and, and you know some other high-level people that are in that room. Um, however, when it comes to trade shows and events, I mean, there's several within the industry. I've learned over the past couple of years which ones give me a better return on investment than others. Yeah. So um, I, I, I have a, a couple that are always on my agenda that I always go to. And you might not sell something that day, yeah, but you, sure. will, you will meet somebody at that event that might be able to connect you or you can sell something to later. Could be three months, six months. You, you just don't know. Um, and, you know, it, it, it's amazing. When you start hanging around some other people who are at a higher level than you, it forces you to come up, whether you want to or not. You know, it expands your mindset and, and you really become a different person. So I, I'm a huge proponent. You got to get your ass out from behind the desk. You you can't just, you know, if you're if you're a technical trade, you can't just swing the hammer all day long. You can't, you know, just work on the car all day long. You have to go out there and you have to you have to let your mind see what other possibilities and things are out there. You have to go out there and see how others are doing it within your industry as well. That's super important. I think too, it sparks creativity and that when yeah. you're create creating in your business, you're alive. You're like, yes, I'm creating something. I'm moving this. When you talked about the starting, what do we need to start? It's that puts you in creativity mode uh, to that. By the way, next time you're in Dallas, come see us. Or, it or will right do. I was just there. Yeah, <laughs> Literally, I, I came home Saturday. Well, we'll have to connect next time you're here. Yeah. So uh, let me wrap with this question. What's one tip you would give our listeners about mm -hmm. how to expand their network and connect with high level individuals? That What's one tip that you use? Um, one tip I would use, I would definitely do some research and go find a group that you align with, you know, whether it's a, a mastermind group like yours or some, listen, there, there's hundreds if not thousands of them out there. Go do some research. Don't be afraid to spend a couple of dollars on yourself because I'm telling you that return on investment is going to be a hundredfold of whatever it costs you to get in. 
So true. I always say you can buy your way in, or earn your way in, or both. And yeah. often I do both. Mm -hmm. um, how can they find your book and how can they follow you? Uh, easiest way to follow me is uh, go to the website, it's Thomas Keenan, T O M A S, thomaskeenan.com. In there, you can find uh, Amazon links to my book, uh, both, you know, paperback and uh, Kindle versions. And there's a bunch of extra stuff. There's actually a really good download in there that I would tell all the listeners to go and get. Uh, in the middle of the page, there's a link that says download the book goodies. Ah. There, it's going to give you all of the actionable stuff that we talked about. So I actually share the Excel spreadsheet that we put together over here to assess our team. Oh, I love that. Yeah. Guys, go get that. Go on the website. We'll put it in the show notes. Go download that stuff. Hey, listen, great episode. Guys, remember every Monday, noon central, I bring you successful entrepreneurs like this to help share wisdom, insights, uh, their experiences, successes, failures, so that you can learn from those to grow your business, fight the good fight of entrepreneurialism, and get to that level of success you define. So join us next week, Monday, noon central, for Connect, Share, Prosper. All right, everybody, take care, and we will talk to you soon.